Hey, what's going on guys? So today I want to do a little bit of a different video. I have four different neck knives here, and although I've carried and used every one of these, I haven't used any single one enough to really do a, a, an official review on it. You know, when I do a review on a product, I like to get a lot of use out of it. I like to really kind of know whether it's going to be comfortable, whether it works as advertised, and all these little things you find out from using something. You know, anyone can look at a picture or take something, you know, out of a box and make an assessment or an assumption on it. And although those videos are entertaining too, like occasionally I'll do a first impressions type video, it's nice and people like seeing these new designs and stuff, but I think a lot of people really appreciate getting feedback on, on something that someone's actually used to save them the time and aggravation of finding out for themselves and maybe being disappointed. You know what I mean? So um, it's not really a review, it's just kind of an overview, I suppose. A couple of these are also discontinued. So they're going to be a lot harder to find. You can't just, you know, hop on Amazon or, or you know, hop on your, your favorite knife dealer and just buy them. You know, you're going to have to look on eBay, look through all the forums, you know, the for sale and trade sections and stuff like that. I love exposing people, though, to older knife designs they've never seen before, you know, because maybe they get really fixated on it, something they want for the collection or something they want to try, and then they go on that hunt. And the hunt for that old knife is usually very exciting because eventually you'll find it. You know, all these old knives are out there somewhere. You know, um, usually eBay is the best place for that because you get random people that just buy stuff at garage sales to resell or whatever, and they'll throw something up there, and, and you get a lot of great deals too because a lot of people aren't familiar with it and they don't really know its value. The problem with buying old knives on eBay is that the prices are all over the place. Some people make you know assumptions as to what they think it's worth. Some people, I mean, sometimes it's like ridiculous the price, and it can go ridiculous both ways. It could be way overpriced, and you're like, how can they even think to ask that? Probably they don't know anything about knives. And then it could be the other way, where they're like, wow, this is a really expensive, nice, collectible knife, and they're selling it for nothing because they don't know anything about it. So, I don't know. The hunt is usually very exciting. But anyway, I'm just going to go through each one, tell you briefly my experiences with it. Uh, I'm not going to give you any specs or anything, no details or anything like that. You can find that out on your own if you're interested in you know more information. So, uh, jumping right into it, the top one here is a Boker Gnome. And uh, this is a, a specific knife that I wanted to try for a long time. And uh, I had an old friend from YouTube uh, send me a message. He found me on Instagram and we were, you know, shooting the breeze and talking back and forth. And he said, you know, I got this Boker Gnome. I'm not really interested anymore. Is there anything you want to trade for? And I did work out a trade, I believe, for a rake fixed blade. I, I think it was the Hornet is what I uh, ended up selling him. Uh, Elliot is his name. And if he's watching, how you doing, Elliot? But yeah, an old, old school YouTuber. Um, but yeah, I was very excited when I got this because it was something I wanted to try. I really wanted to do a review on it, but I just never got enough time on it. Used it a little bit here and there, carried it one or two days, but it wasn't really enough for me. Um, the lanyard and bead was put on after, all right, so I don't believe it comes with it. Uh, definitely not the bead, I don't know about the lanyard offhand. But uh, it's kind of needed for a grip with this. You can see this is like a finger and a half <laughs> grip on this handle. Nice big uh, deep finger troil, okay, so it feels kind of secure in your hand, but it makes a world of a difference having that long lanyard so your other three fingers get a full grip on here. All right, so you don't have to you know, worry about that falling out uh, as easily. But pretty interesting, you know, I liked it. You know, it's a cool little collectible. I like the design. Um, I am a fan of Boker, uh, Boker Plus specifically. They have so many different, very affordable uh, designs. It's just, it's nice because there's such a variety there, you know. But interesting knife, the Boker Gnome. If you have a Boker Gnome, let me know uh, what you guys think of yours, if you still carry it or not. But you can have that knife, it can still be found for between like 30 and 40 bucks. All right, if it's something that interests you. The next one here, an M Tech. <laughs> it doesn't look like an M Tech, looks like, I don't know, a CRKT minimalist, you know, or an actual Foltz minimalist. But it is not, it is a copy of the design. And I know a lot of people out there, M Tech is one of those brands you just kind of start off with. You know, you get into knives, you find a bunch of different cool designs, and then you soon find out that they're not great knives. And you start watching knife videos and read the knife forums. m -Tech is kind of one of those companies that people kind of frown upon, you know, for having cheap stuff. But, you know, they have a sharp edge. They do work. I, again, didn't use this one enough to really get an official opinion on it. And I'm such a fan of, of Alan Foltz's work, and specifically the CRKT Minimalist, that I didn't want to touch doing a review on this. I just happened to get this from someone I believe is a gift or a throw in on a trade or something like that. But they want to just briefly show it on camera here. These can be had anywhere from like 10 to 20 bucks. I think they're on Amazon for like maybe nine and change, something like that. Um, I can't really promote this specific one. If you like the design, really look into the CRKT. 
you know, it's still not that much more expensive and totally worth it. But uh, I don't know if you have an M-Tech obsession or a collection or whatever, or if you want, you know, a similar design for a couple bucks cheaper, this might be the way to go. Again, I can't speak to the performance of it, um, but you know, it's just, it's like a, a fake minimalist, you know? So that is that. Next one, very interesting uh, old knife. This is an old school knife from Blackie Collins. <laughs> I know some of the uh, the old collectors, they're very familiar with Blackie Collins. Um, this one is called the Buddy System. And uh, very interesting, you know, knife design here. Let's look at the, uh, the sheath. See patent pending, made in the USA. All right. On the back, Blackie Collins, knives, the logo. It makes this kind of unique and cool is there's a, a, a pin on a spring, okay? And that is how you take the knife out. This is basically being held in by this piece here. So you push, you know, naturally, when you get a grip on the knife, your thumb lands here, you push forward, and that will release the knife from the sheath, all right? Totally looks like a knife from the 80s. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like the design doesn't do much for me. It's not like a, a sexy knife. It's not a cool looking knife to be, but it's a piece of knife history. All right, and probably, to be honest, the oldest neck knife that I have, okay? This was available in a couple different colors. I've seen blue ones, I've seen white ones. I've also seen a uh, serrated version where it had like some really wide space scallops on it. You can see there's a high polish on the, uh, the blade here. This one, of course, is used, but just interesting. Again, piece of knife history. Blacky there, you know, just kind of cool. And it does work, the sheath system works great. All right, see as you push in, it wants to ride to the side and then it snaps in place here. So it pushes that spring in and then pops in place and it's not coming out. You can't pull this out. So uh, it's a very effective design. Maybe not the coolest looking knife, but definitely effective. Now these sell for about a hundred bucks, um, over a hundred on eBay, you know, brand new in the box and all that stuff for collectors. Uh, the, the value on this used one, I don't know, probably 50 or 60 bucks still. Not because it's an amazing knife, but it is definitely a collectible. It's an interesting piece of knife history. Blackie Collins. So, uh, let's see, what else? The last one here is a knife from uh, Outdoor Edge. This one is called The Wedge. And there was two sizes to this knife. The other one is even larger, which is very cool. I never got a chance to get that one. This is also continued. The Blackie Collins is uh, discontinued. Uh, but this one is also discontinued. If you have the larger one, let me know what you think of yours. Pretty interesting, uh, this did come with the little crab claw here, okay? You can see there's an integrated pocket clip in the sheath, so you can wear it in the pocket or on the belt. You can clip this to uh, the uh, belt loop on your pants, which is how I carried this the last time I carried it. I did, it did come with cord, I believe, and I had this as a neck knife at some point. But my last configuration was clipped on, you know, the belt loop for my jeans, and it was just kind of dangling there. Pretty easy to get to. You can see there's a large piece that extends out, and it says push. So if you can use some common sense, you can imagine that is just keeping the blade in, which it is. So you push that down and the blade slides out. Very, very lightweight, just an over mold of uh, plastic over that uh, blade here. Very comfortable in the hand. I like that this is rounded on the bottom here. So if you choke up real tight to it, there's no, you know, accidental poking that. You know what I mean? The edge comes down to there. You get like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch of space there. Just in case you kind of ran up on it, you're not going to... You know, jab your finger in there and cut yourself or anything. Uh, but it actually came pretty darn sharp. You know, only used it a couple times. Uh, carried it more in this configuration than I did a neck knife. I did carry a neck knife, I remember, at least one or two days. But it's like, it weighs absolutely nothing. Pretty interesting, you know, sheath system. You can see it's skeletonized here, so you can see that blade through it. And I like Outdoor Edge. You guys know I am a huge fan of Leduc. And that might be making a comeback soon. Because I am changing out my, uh, my neck knife again. But yeah, just interesting. Huge tab, can't miss it. You know, you can see it's integrated into the sheath. Okay, so you have that kind of spring action naturally. So the one issue I had though, when I first got this, I was angling this down and that edge was catching, you know, the button here. So you can't, you gotta kind of angle it up a little bit. You can see it slides right past it and then snaps down in place so it, you can't pull it out, okay? The edge sells for about $20 plus if you can find it on eBay. Again, the prices are all over the place. You could find this thing for 100 bucks. You could find it for 150. You can find it for $8. Who knows? 
That's the problem with discontinued knives is the market, whoever owns them, who's selling them at the moment is gonna control the market. So there you go guys, just a couple different neck knives I wanted to touch upon a little bit and, and expose you to some, some old ones, specifically the Blackie Collins uh, buddy system as well as the Outdoor Edge Wedge, just some interesting ones. But hey, if you guys have some neck knives, let me know down below what you're carrying. Um, I like that I get a lot of a good feedback on the neck knife stuff. Occasionally someone will comment like, oh, it's dumb, why would you carry that, it's a bad design, whatever. I love neck knives. Uh, the number one reason, convenience. It is right there all the time. Now some people may think that about their regular folders. Say, oh, I dip down and grab it. That's cool too, I always carry a folder on me. Um, but specifically when I'm like sitting, and more specifically when I'm sitting in the car, nothing is more easy and accessible and quick than a good neck knife, you know? Um, there are drawbacks naturally, and I've talked about that in previous videos, but uh, I like it. I've always been a fan, and I've converted a lot of people. I've gotten a lot of messages over the years, people saying, eh, I never really liked the idea, but I started carrying one, and now I kind of like it, you know, so that's cool. But it's not for everyone, you know, like everything else. Nothing, not one thing is for everyone, except for good food. I guess everyone on the planet likes good food. <laughs> Other than that, we're all very different. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Take care.